I want to look at the calling of God. The calling of God. People God is calling. Who are God calling? We look at Israel and then we look at the nations. The nations in the Israel are treated separately in the realms of God. They are not treated together as one people. But they will join together as one in the end. But first, let us look at Israel, then look at the nations. Jesus said to the people in John chapter 6, that unless my father calls you to me, you can come to me. John chapter 6, from verse 44 to 47, he was telling the people around that time, of course, they were not Gentiles. He was talking to Jews who were following him here and there. And he said that his father has to teach them before they can come to him. It is also true with every person who comes to Christ, whether you are Jew or Greek. You will first of all be taught by God. It is God who opened your heart to know Christ before you can come to him. But when Peter saw that he was Christ, the son of the living God, he said, it was my father who revealed that to you. So Jesus was saying that unless my father calls you to me, John chapter 6 from verse 44, you can come to me. So he was not surprised when verse, from 60 they could understand him and from verse 66 downwards they departed. Lord of the people who were following Jesus left him and remained only the 12 apostles, including Judas Iscariot. So in John chapter 44, Jesus, John chapter 6, verse 44, chapter 6, the chapter is 6, the verse 44. No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me draw him. And I'll raise him up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall be all taught of God. Every man therefore that had heard and had learned of the Father come to me. So first of all, you have to know the Father first before you can come to the Son. And the Father will reveal the Son to you. Not that any man has seen the Father, save he who is of God. So if the person is not of God, he can also know the Father. If the person is not of God, there's no way he can know God the Father. Because the knowledge of God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ is the eternal life. John 17, 3, Jesus said, And to know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. So if somebody is confused with who the Father is and who Jesus Christ is, it means that the person is not of God. So you will just be messing things up. Because the Father will first reveal himself to you, and then he will draw you to Christ. That's what Jesus was teaching here. Very, very, I say unto you, he that believe on me have everlasting life. Verse 47. Then verse 60. Many therefore of the disciples, when they heard this, said, This is a hard saying, who can receive it? Jesus knew that, well, this is not for them. So he knew those who believe. Verse 54. For Jesus knew from the beginning those they were that believe not, and who should even betray him. Therefore he said, Therefore I said unto you that no man can come unto me except to were given unto him of my father. From that time many of the disciples went back and never walked again with him. They walked no more with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, will you also go away? So here, Jesus is saying that the father will first show you by himself and then he will draw you to Christ. That is the calling of God, the calling of the Father. Now in Luke chapter 10, from verse 17 to 21, also there were 70 disciples that Jesus sent when they came. They were able to cast out devil, including Satan himself. And Jesus said to the Father, verse 21, that nobody can know you 
can do what these people are doing except you give them you reveal that to them except if nobody doesn't know you they can't come to you so in that hour verse 22 and looked at 10 jesus rejoiced in the spirits and said i thank thee O father lord of heaven and earth that thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent and have revealed them to babies you are revealed to babies that they can cast out the devils in my name including satan even so father for so it seemed good in thy sight Verse 22, Luke chapter 10, All things are delivered of me, uh, to me of my Father, and no man know the, who the Son is by the Father, and who the Father is by the Son, and him to whom the Son will reveal him. So when we come to Christ, Christ also teaches more about the Father. So we know the Father more, and we know him, Christ also, the Son. And then in Matthew chapter 16, Verse 16 and 17, Peter said to him, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And he said, My Father who revealed it to you. It's not just your intelligence, flesh and blood. But there was something that was done there, happened later. Jesus said to them in verse 20, Matthew chapter 16. After Jesus has known and told the apostles, he is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus warned them, he charged them, and said to them, tell no person that I, Jesus, is the Christ. Then charged his disciples that they should tell no man that he was Jesus the Christ. Why? Because he said the Father who should reveal it to him to you to reveal him not any man peter is my father who revealed me to you that i'm christ so when we stand in the streets of the world jesus the lord believe on him we are ignorant we don't even know what we are doing when we go to the, we think we are going for evangelism believe in jesus he is the Lord. Come to him. He is Christ. We are ignorant. Because that is the Father's work. It's not our work. We are giving work to do. But that's not what we are concentrating. And so first of all, you look in the church. That the church are concerned with even what Jesus did for them. Jesus cleansing them. Standing for them. As their righteousness. The church is rather teaching the believers to cleanse themselves. Then what happened to the blood of Jesus? Number two, the church is rather concentrating on revealing Christ to the world. Then what happened to the work of the Father? But we, the work that's given to us, that is called the work of the kingdom of God and God's righteousness. We are not doing it. What are we supposed to do? Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God and righteousness. What does it mean? Kingdom of God. He said, those who believe, they will cast out devils. They will take up serpents. They will lay hands on the sick. They will bring recovery. People who believe in the gospel. Who are those who believe in the gospel? People of the nations. Listen, anybody from the nations is supposed to believe in the gospel. Mark chapter 16, verse 15 to 18, Jesus told the apostles, go into the world, preach the gospel to every man, every creature. Those who believe and are baptized, they will be safe. Those who not believe, they are damned. And these signs will follow those who believe. They will stand in the street and preach, Jesus is the Christ. Come to Jesus. Is that what Jesus said? He said, those who believe in my name, the sign that will follow them, number one, they will cast out devils, speak new tongues. 
they will not speak with the tongues of the as if they are just human beings, ordinary human beings. Oh God, our sins, we are going to grave, we are dust. He said they will speak with new tongues. These are people who receive the power of God. It's, Jesus said, the words I speak, it's my father in me who does the works. Speak with words that are bold to change the situations of the earth. Change the world. Remove it from the hands of the devils. Cast the devils out. Take up the serpents. He said, behold, I give you power. Trample the serpents and scorpions. So the power of the enemy. And nothing should be enemies hurt you. That's why he told the 70 disciples who came and said that devils are subject to us in your name. And look at the 10 from verse 17. So the, these are the works. That's the work of the kingdom of God. Because in the kingdom of heaven, there are enemy seed. They are all kind of evil and bad. Jesus said, when I come well, I will destroy and burn the bad ones. Matthew 13, 24, 25, down west, 47 to 50. That's what I will do when I came. I return the second time. But now, we are to make sure that the devils are not destroying everything. The bandits, the terrorists, the armed robbers, that's our work. That's why we go to church. That's why we're going to listen to the word of God. Not to pay tithes and sow seed and be ten commandments to be righteous and have money. Not to go to the streets and tell people Jesus Christ when people are killing them. We need to work the kingdom of God in this space called the kingdom of heaven. That's our work. But God has his people and he calls them. First, everybody in the world called by the gospel. When God reveal himself to you and draw you to Christ, you will understand the gospel that is preached to you. That Christ has come, the Savior. And everything Jesus does is free. You are not buying anything. Salvation is the gift of God. It's not by your works. Then you are to work. You work. And when you constrict for the constrict the kingdom of God, Jesus said, you have manifold blessings here on earth, lands, houses, whatever. Luke chapter 19. Sorry, Luke chapter 18. Luke 18, 28, 30. Matthew 19, 27, 30. Mark 10, 27, 30. Jesus mentioned these things there. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things shall be added unto you. For all what the Gentile, the nation seek, your father knows that you need them. Matthew 6, 32, 33. So we have work to do, and that's why God called us. Now, God did not call anybody from Israel by the gospel. He's going to save them, not by the gospel. But look, sorry, Romans chapter 11, verse 8, verse 13, 25 to 28. Say, God has branded them. By you, Gentiles, I'm talking to you. Branded happened to Israel for you to come in first. Then all Israel shall be safe. Concerning the gospel, their enemies, but their fathers seek their beloved. But anyone in the nations who will not believe in the gospel will not be saved. In other words, God wants all his people in the nations to receive the gospel today. And the gospel concerns the kingdom of God. The kingdom concerns the kingdom of God. So what does it mean? He wants all the nations to hear the kingdom of God as what sons of God. So when you are even the child in the kingdom of God, you are to destroy the works of the devil because that's what the kingdom of God is all about. Those the kingdom of God are set up to destroy the works of the devil. 
because they are all sons of God. The sons of God are manifested for the purpose of destroying the works of the devil. That's all. First John 3, 8. And Romans chapter 8, verse 17, verse 19, verse 29 says, As children, then hears of God and don't hear of Christ. For all the creation waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. For Christ become the firstborn among us. So we are set to destroy the works of the devils. That's our work. That's why we receive grace. And God wants all his people in the nations to receive the gospel. All. And that is what we're supposed to understand. In your sleep, in your daily life, God is still talking to you. So hear him, listen. If you are of God, God will reveal his way to you. And that's what you're supposed to follow. So that's how we're going to be safe in the nations. And how Israel is also going to be safe. Mika, again, Mika chapter 4. Verse 1 to 4, when we come to the God of the house of Jacob from the nations, we sit under the vine. And Jesus said, I'm the vine. You are the branches. John 15, 5. Don't sit under the fig tree. Don't go to Mount Sinai because you call to Mount Zion. 13 to that 4, verse 21 to 26 and verse 30. Hebrew chapter 12, verse 18 to 25. Listening to this, in Mount Sinai, they go there to sacrifice, obey commandments and ordinances. But Mount Sinai, Zion, we come to the God of Jesus Christ, the church, the broad spangling, the new covenant, to impact the world and bring the will of God here on earth. God is working in you to cast everything under the feet of Christ. Philippians 2, verse 10 to 16. So do that so you will not be brave and harm. May God which bless you. Stay blessed.